My name is Haley Glassick. I'm a master's student in the Gata Lake Ecology Lab at Utah State University in the Department of Watershed Sciences, and I research fish and aquatic ecology. The goal of my research is to determine if drought-driven lake level declines have impacted habitat for two species within Bear Lake, one being the Bear Lake Sculpin, which is a small forage fish, and the other being the Bear Lake strain of the Bonneville Cutthroat Trout, which is one of the large trophy sport fish of the lake. The Bonneville Cutthroat Trout and the Bear Lake population is one of the main sources for the brood stock or the eggs and milt that are used to make many of the other populations throughout the state itself. Because the fish is unique and recognizes its own strain, it's also a species of concern for the state of Utah. Years when the lake levels are high, the trout are able to spawn in the tributaries, so the tributaries are completely connected to the lake itself. There is enough flow in the tributaries so that the Bonneville cutthroat trout are cued to move up the stream, and then they're able to make it back safely into the lake itself. Bear Lake right now is close to full capacity. It hasn't been this high in the past 20 years. In low water years, the lake can become completely disconnected from the tributaries themselves. And this is a problem for the Bonneville cutthroat trout because they may not be able to access the tributary at all during their spawning season. If they are able to access it, they are often imperiled because of predation by large birds such as the American white pelican. And if they actually make it up into the tributary, it could be possible that their eggs or larvae are unable to make it back into the lake to complete their life cycle. So today we were in the spawning trap on Swan Creek, which is one of the main spawning tributaries of Bear Lake. What we're doing is we're capturing the Bear Lake Bonneville cutthroat trout as they are moving to their spawning grounds. When the fish first come into the trap, the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources biologists first weighs and measures each fish and determines its sex. Then we anesthetize the fish to keep them safe as we handle them. Then the fish is given to another UDWR biologist, which takes its eggs or milt to create fertilized eggs for the hatcheries. Then it finally comes to me where I weigh and measure the fish once again to make sure I have accurate data as well. And then I insert a tag into the fish. Passive integrative transponder tags or pit tags are used in order to recapture fish and it's very similar to what you actually put in a dog or cat at a vet's office. So once you go to the vet, they can scan the tag and each tag has an individual number that is identifiable to that specific animal or in this case the specific fish. Because we're using these specific tags, we can get measurements such as growth and weight over time as we recapture them and largely we can create models in order to estimate how much survival is happening within the population and how healthy the population is as a whole. The Bear Lake Sculpin are endemic to Bear Lake, which means that they are only found within this lake itself. They are also a species of concern within the state because of that and they are an important forage fish for many of the sport fishes of Bear Lake, such as the non-native lake trout, as well as the native Bear Lake Bonneville cutthroat trout. When lake levels are high within Bear Lake, the Bear Lake sculpin are able to spawn on the cobble habitat on the eastern shore. This fluctuates over time, but when the lake levels are high, they're able to use the maximum amount so that their nests aren't too densely populated over that eastern shore and that they have enough oxygen to hatch properly. When lake levels are low, much of the cobble habitat that the Bear Lake Sculpin need to spawn becomes exposed. During this time, they may not have as many spots to place their nests, and it is also possible that if they are able to spawn, that the eggs are not viable to hatch because they don't have enough resources to hide from predators afterwards. In order to sample the Bear Lake Sculpin, we go out on a large research vessel and use a trawl net which is a net that gets pulled behind the boat on the bottom of the lake itself. It is weighted on one side and float top on the other. We drag the net behind the boat and as it is moving behind the boat, it captures the Bear Lake Sculpin who are not large enough or fast enough to actually escape the net itself. After collecting the fish in the net, we bring them up onto the deck. We then take length measurements and we sample them and anesthetize them in order to take 
measurements back at the lab as well as diets. We trawl at night because the fish are generally more active at night. We have gone out during the day and haven't been as successful and as at night. And it's also very nice and relaxing to be out on the lake <laughs> during the nighttime as opposed to during the day. Because we are working so closely with the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, I have a 40-year historical data set, which I've been using to couple with the lake elevations as well as my habitat map. By using that 40-year historical data set, I can model what the fish were exposed to historically and what responses we saw in the Bear Lake Sculpin population, and then additionally collect data myself in order to augment the UDWR's historical data set.